Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining me today. I want to talk to you today about wisdom. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, Solomon succeeds his father David as king of Israel. And God told Solomon, ask me for whatever you want me to give you. And Solomon responded, God, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? And God said to Solomon, since this is your heart's desire, and you've not asked for wealth, riches, or honor, or the death of your enemies, or long life, wisdom and knowledge will be given you. And I will also give you wealth, riches, and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had, and none after you will ever have. Solomon writes in Proverbs 16:16. 16, 16, he says, How much better to get wisdom than gold, to choose understanding rather than silver. Here's the thing, we need wisdom in every area of our life, in our relationships, uh, as husband, as wife, as parents. Uh, we need wisdom with our finances. We need wisdom and how to, to please and honor God. The Bible tells us to get wisdom. Uh, God says to Solomon in Proverbs 4, 5 to 7, he says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. Do not forsake wisdom for she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it costs all that you have, get understanding. So the question is, how do we, how do we get wisdom? The first thing is that we need to fear God. Several verses in scripture uh, I want to read to you. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Psalm 111.10 says, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commands will grow in wisdom. And Proverbs 1.7, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. We fear a lot of things. We fear failure. We fear rejection. We fear what people will think. But do we really fear God? We need a healthy fear, a, a respect for God, for who he is and for what he can do. Jesus said these words in Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. The second thing, not only do we fear God, but ask for wisdom. If we want wisdom, ask. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. This verse is in the middle of a passage that's talking about trials and temptations. I want you to take a moment and just think, uh, listen to your prayers. Most of the time, if you're honest, we ask God to take away the pain. We ask God to remove the difficulty, the obstacles, to make it easier for us. But James says, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds, because the testing of your faith develops you, uh, develops in you perseverance, maturity, completeness, so that you lack nothing. So our prayer should be more for wisdom, not just knowledge and information, but practical spiritual insight, so that we can do what is right. God is the giver of wisdom and Scripture tells us that he gives generously to all who ask him. So not only do we fear God, we ask God for wisdom, but a third way to get wisdom is to hang out with wise people. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. The first half of this verse is a promise. He who walks with the wise grows wise. He promises that wisdom is contagious. If you surround yourself with people that the Bible would consider wise, uh, it's going to be contagious. You will, by nature of proximity, become a wiser person simply by being in the presence and influence of wise people. Walking with wise people means doing life with wise people. According to the Bible, a wise person is someone who understands that all of life is connected, meaning that what you do today and what you decide today, what you think about today will influence who you are tomorrow. That what you did yesterday will impact the experience of life today. All of life is connected. So the wise person makes decisions based on not simply today, but on tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. The promise is that if we walk with the wise, if we do life with the wise, that we will grow wise. So I want you to identify who are great people, who are wise people in your life. 
put yourself under those people. Be purposeful in who influences you. If you want to serve God, if you, if you want a godly marriage, if you want to be great in your finances, find those people who have shown wisdom, who've shown discipline and exhibit fruit in their lives in those various areas and learn from those people. I wanna encourage you too to spend time in the Proverbs. Proverbs has 31 chapters. And if you will just take one proverb chapter a day through the month, uh, like for instance, today is the 14th of the month. So read chapter 14 and, and so on and so forth. Repeat that month after month. And here's what I can tell you in all of these things that you will grow and gain in godly wisdom as you pursue it. Solomon said, how much better to get wisdom than gold, to choose understanding rather than silver. Let's pray. Father, I ask today that you would give us all wisdom. Give us understanding. Give us wisdom in our lives, how to pursue life day by day. Your word says that if we lack wisdom, to ask you, that you will give generously to all without finding fault. God, give us wisdom beyond our abilities. Give us wisdom, godly wisdom, for every area of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.